Hunter x Hunter episode 109. Suck it, bird. That was the most overkill break damage limit attack in anime history that I can think of. Come here, my sweet little child. Adopt her and love her with all your heart. <laughs> The true meaning of power. Or smush her, one or the other. You can smush her like you might smush an eagle and all your problems will be over. It's a very weird sort of red pill, blue pill moment for the king. You could smush Kamugi and your life will continue. Or you could love Kamugi and see how deep this rabbit hole goes. Taking stock X and X taking action. It's a cool choice to start this off with a very peaceful, natural scene. Nothing to see here, just a normal morning with birds. God, this arc feels like a lifetime. <laughs> this arc has more than like more content than some full shows I've seen. This infamous central stairwell that nobody can seem to make it past. I see they're making a plan for Palm. It's not directly related to victory, right? The Kagawa and Palm is an interesting matchup. Uh, this whole thing is bizarre. Interesting. Like, who would have known? Who would have anticipated all this? I wouldn't expect anything, man. Right. I'm confident I would be saying this, even without knowing the whole Kamugi Gunji arc. My old job. Yeah. There is no next chance here. So much build-up too on this hesitation thing. Yeah, that's sort of what I was saying last episode. Yeah, like even if they're not there, you probably don't have to do much. They'll, they'll come to you. They will find each other. You wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't have ever be able to guess. Nobody could. The kind of insanity that's happening in the palace. Oh, Colt, still relevant. How's the baby? <laughs> He's become a father. Okay, good to know. Is it useful? This is going to raise a whole bunch of more questions that they can't answer. If Kalua figures out that <laughs> there's like a chess kid in the castle distracting the king and that he's had a change of heart, it will be the, the greatest deduction moment of all of anime. King got injured. But like, I don't know, this could be a false or a bad lead. They're getting there. They're almost there. Yeah. I, I don't know. My gut sense is that you don't want to entertain this too much. Thinking only of your mission to attack and win. The only thing this seems to be useful for is a measure of doubt in whether or not to totally annihilate them. It's begun. I guess they needed this as part of the plan, but it's not really ideal to have 5 million normal people surrounding the palace while all of this is happening. Yeah, that's what they want them to think. You're losing him. Poofy is not going to make it out of this. Not, I was about to say, not you. It's not you. Not, yeah. It's you. Before you die, can you explain your philosophy and in your internal characterization? your internal characterization? There's something about Nefropito that makes me think she'd be fine if the king were to be dispatched. She'd roll with it. For some reason, I feel like she and Go might get along. The two of them would be a whirlwind of fun and disaster under other circumstances. Disappearing is itself an alert. You're on the move. Okay, at least you drew the wrong conclusion from it. Oh, I was just talking about this. This is a moral type plan. They're sniffing out the trick, but them sniffing out the wrong trick is the trick. Another day at work. Because they think they've sniffed it out, 
they won't. Right. It's a very difficult standard to maintain. Never failing anything. Huge weakness. He just gets a sup. I feel better having moral here. <laughs> Imagine how novice feeling right now. It's okay to be scared. Oh, can they not communicate while they're in here? Oh, he showed up! Did you change your hair? Who are you? Who, who is this? This is Nav? <laughs> Why is he blonde? As long as I avoid a panic attack. That's scary. She can touch you with her hand at any time. I'm so confused. I feel like maybe I'm stupid. His fear made him blonde. He was so afraid his hair color changed. Is that really what happened? Did he, did he really get scared blonde? Or is it white? Did he just get scared? <laughs> did the color literally get scared out of his hair? Are they just not mentioning it to avoid hurting his feelings? It's wild considering... Didn't we start with like 10 meters or something? At least he's showing up and doing his part. You know, you can still be useful if you can't do the highest thing. Better than sitting around. You don't really get me anymore. Who are you also in a lot of danger? Not just from eagles randomly. What was, I'm still confused. What was the eagle? Why was there an eagle there? Was the eagle trying to like pick her up and bring it her to the nest? But yeah, one of them, given that they don't care about their own lives and being so dedicated to this version, this vision they have of the king, they might just kill her at, at their own sacrifice. It is white. He just got this color skin out of his hair. Okay. Oh, he's butterfree. He's got like the. He's got the sleep powder. Is that what selection is going to look like? That transition. Yeah, and they won't like run in the way of your nan attacks. What happened to Palm? Naka no yeah, very sympathetic. Probably why he sees it so clearly. Honestly, I haven't really fully accepted Malirion yet, but that's sweet of Knuckle. Well, the biggest heart is Knuckle. Wow. Wow. To think of th about that without having seen the Gunji games, to have that as his default, the way he can see the good in people, in another lifetime, he would make a really, really great teacher on Izuka. The goodness isn't him, you know? I don't know if I fully can articulate this, but if you yourself are seeing the beauty in other people, that beauty almost must exist in some level in yourself. It's a mirror. It doesn't mean you're the same. It doesn't mean you act the same. It doesn't mean you're as good or as bad or whatever, but it does mean like that thing exists in you. You have that node. You have that extension in your brain, in your heart. Knuckle just sees it in all life. It's his beauty. <laughs> Moral dilemma, his danger is not his death. It's killing. Go on having none of those concerns. <laughs> I'm gonna kill the ants. Everyone look at our hands. 
At least there's some benefit that came out of that obnoxious dart guy. Oh yeah, Moral's been absolutely punishing himself. Live up to the ideals you professed to Kalua. That's how it is. That's almost always how it's gonna go. I've thought about this in a bunch of ways. Like, one reason people work out is so that you're physically capable when physical challenges present themselves. But like, part of working out and getting strong is compromising your body. If you're always exercising, if you're pushing that to its limit, you're rarely at 100%. There's a part of you that's like recovering. Outside of the physical, one idea I like a lot is when people think about taking on new endeavors, the most common thing you'll hear from them, everyone has done this at some point, is saying, I don't have the time or the energy. Which will vary in truthfulness from person to person. Like, people who have a ton of free time also say they have no time. Some people say schedules actually are jam-packed and have like a ton of responsibilities. So the busyness may in fact be valid and thinking about it in the conventional way, it would make sense to identify some period in the future where like, oh, I'll have more time and energy then. And so I'll do it then. And that might actually be the best thing. Another way to look at it though, sort of a challenge to that is being busy is the best time to start something difficult. Because first of all, while you think you can foresee times where you'll be less busy or have more energy, things sort of have a way of filling that unexpectedly. It's like that rule, work fills the time you have. Your tasks will fill the energy you have. But also if you can successfully do something at your busiest, least energetic level, you can also handle it under any circumstances that present themselves. And if things do get easier, you'll be that much more powerful. You'll be that much better at doing it and executing. When typically what happens is like, maybe that free time does roll around and then you just kind of enjoy the free time. The bottom line, this is okay. It's not optimal, but it almost never will be optimal in life in that way. Waiting for it, you sort of miss the whole thing. Part of the talent is doing it at a suboptimal level. <laughs> It also sounds like he's making, coming to terms with his own death. Which is, you know. It's also not too late for Nav at any moment you could join in. But if you can't, you should do your part, which I think he's doing. Like, I'm not going to hate on someone for being good, but not perfect. He could have just fled, you know? He could have just never come back. Do the best with what you have. This dude has purpose, for real. It's a vicarious gift from going in a way, though it's Kalua's beauty. As I was saying. That's a cool way to look at it. It is kind of fun to think about uh, epics in your life. There's a energy you can give yourself through romanticizing narratives, as long as they're not totally fabricated. If you're actually doing the cool things and recognize the cool things, rather than like change the terms to like, this terrible thing I'm doing is now a good thing. I also love this sort of like vows to the universe, you know, promises to the stars or what have you. There's something really compelling about that. Yo. We don't play Gunji together anymore. That bird found out who the king was. Am I right? Ah yes, even the king cannot escape the philosophical quandaries of us lower beings. <laughs> wow. Is this the greatest build-up? It's up there. Who the hell knows? So the show also has done a great job not only setting up the events, it set up the characters, it set up the stakes. It also set up the precedent that we cannot predict anything that's gonna happen, which just adds a whole 3D level of thrill to it. Palm. My ex-girlfriend. Oh, it's not over, is it? I hate you. I feel like one of the things that will be a surprise is Pom. I feel very confident she ascended those stairs, but we're not seeing anything of her and we're not seeing anything of the reaction from the, the Royal Guard. So who knows where she is and what they did with her. She could be a puppet too. She could be a hostage, though I don't really feel like they're the hostage taking type. There are just so many angles. I mean, it's not just our team against the ant team. It's also very weirdly poofy against the king. It's the king against himself. King is such an interesting character. It's been such a pleasant surprise to watch this development from this cold, ruthless, DBZ cell-like annihilator to this person just like having an existential crisis. He has everything, you would think. Why is he so lost? And also that exact thing makes it more infuriating for the king. Like I have everything. Why do I have nothing? I think I was saying this about Freerun, but it applies here too. I think it's a really great plan or really good for someone with enough sort of inquisitiveness, self-directedness, intellectual curiosity to experience these great things really quickly in life. Money, fame, 
power, popularity, whatever, because it helps you eliminate a trap really quickly. There's a potential tragedy in thinking about someone chasing, let's say, fame for their entire lives, right? Like they sacrifice everything for fame. And then maybe at some very advanced stage of life, they get famous, like they're 70 years old and they're hit with this terrible blow that fame really is not that satisfying outside of a brief period for which you're enjoying and reaping the benefits. It's not an enduring source of greatness, internal greatness. The king is cool and interesting because he was just born with everything and like more than fame, more than money. It's something way more central that I think we all sort of covet in one way or the other, which is like best possible raw stats genetically, you know, like he's just born as a perfect being. That's something we can't even aspire to. Like we could never get there. He has this unimaginable dream accomplished from birth and yet. Here we are. The king is also hunting for his dream, which is he starts in a very different material circumstance. He doesn't like embark on the journey, you know, he starts as a god, but then he still has to follow that same path in a sense. It's been a while since I've read this, but it's very Siddhartha. Meanwhile, all this stuff is happening around him. You know, this plan that he put into action is in the works and people are on the way to kill him as their number one mission. With a very mixed group of cast members, with varying degree of like desire for sympathy and understanding. I'm going like, I'm gonna go in there and crack some skulls, knuckle being knuckle, seeing everything that breathes as just a, a lost puppy rubbing against his legs. <laughs>